Hey guys, thank you so much for watching today's New South Wales Through Their Eyes interview. My name is Grace Rowe and I'm really delighted to be hosting today's episode of the New South Wales Through Their Eyes interview series. Today is a particularly exciting episode as joining me are three young people who have been serving on the front lines during the COVID-19 pandemic. Each of our panellists have, through their work, played an important role in supporting their communities right from the pandemic's onset in early 2020. Joining me today is nurse Emma Shug, primary school teacher Tom Rea and Woolworth store manager Christopher Singh. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. Starting with you, Tom, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, yeah, thank you. So I'm Tom, I'm 24 from Helson Park in Sydney. I teach at Summer Hill Public School in Sydney's Inner West. I also went there when I was a child and I teach grade three and four, so one grade three class and one grade four class. And you, Emma? Uh, so my name's Emma, I'm 19 and I'm a second year nursing student at UTS and I absolutely love it. Um, and I also work at North Shore Private Hospital as a ward clerk, um, doing admin, all that. Um, and it's just a great way to immerse myself on the hospital experience and meet new people and yeah, it's great. And Chris? Hi, my name's Chris, I'm 24. I'm a manager at Woolworths Metro. Uh, been in the city for about five and a half years. Uh, actually my first week today at Roselle Metro. So a little bit of a change, so yep. And Chris, working at Woolworths, you've seen how our community has responded to different things like social distancing and panic buying. How has your work changed in response to COVID-19? I think working in the city for five and a half years, having majority of your customers as office workers, um, it really changed overnight when all the office workers were told to work from home. Uh, some of them even made redundant. So yeah, I think the customer base changed dramatically where customers were buying their breakfast and lunch to having mainly residents that only live in the city, um, buying their grocery shopping or toilet paper as everyone's aware. Um, yeah, I think that was the biggest part was the city being a ghost town and not really having any office workers. Um, yeah, I think that changed dramatically and the team initially, very worried about their job security. Um, Woolworths have done an amazing amazing job in ensuring everyone will keep their job, um, getting paid the same. It's, yeah, it's a new normal as we call it, um, and it's just gonna continue to change for us. And so with your knowledge of behind the scenes, transport, supply and demand, is panic buying really necessary? Definitely not. I mean, toilet paper is something that should never be panic bought. I mean, the warehouse obviously doesn't have enough for everyone in Australia to buy two or three packets of toilet paper. But after a week or two, you know, getting regular supply of toilet paper, pasta, canned food. Um, yeah, it was never, yeah, never really worried me too much. It was just that initial week or two where customers were seeing shelves empty. Yeah, it really made it a little bit difficult for everyone. Getting customers irate, um, not happy, having security guards in stores, police in stores. So I think, yeah, it was a worry for a week or two, but seeing everything come back as quick as it did really ensured us and the customers that there is no need to panic. So what young people can take away is that you don't need to buy fearfully or out of panic, but you can buy strategically. Definitely. The, I think someone from the government came out and said, we have enough for everyone. I think the saying was buy what you need. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Emma, working in the medical field, can you tell us how your work has changed in recent months? Yes, so I actually started North Shore Private Hospital working there when COVID all started. So I was very climatised to um, learning the new processes, but there's definitely been such a great emphasis on hand hygiene and personal protective equipment and the whole emphasis on infection control has been um, pretty crazy, I guess. Um, but then also just um, as a nurse, we have to be so much more empathetic and understand towards patients because many hospitals only have one visitor allowed or even none. So just trying to bring them some social normality and just comfort them because they're obviously going through a tough time. But with uni actually, um, obviously I've had to shift to online learning, which being a nurse is very hard because it's all on, online and prac. Um, so yeah, it's just being able to, um, having to climatise to the new 
new ways of learning and having to accept that this is just the reality and that, yeah. So what I'm hearing is that there have been many different precautions put in place to ensure the safety of our community is taken care of and maintained. Do people really need to be afraid of going to the hospitals then? Absolutely not. Um, a hospital's probably the safest place you can go to, really. We are so strict on you know, making sure everyone's safe and we COVID screen every person that, that comes in, ask them the same questions. You have they been to this hotspot or that hotspot? And so we're very strict on that. So, um, and we're all super friendly and we all, you know, we all know what each one of us is going through. And so just, you know, we're all in this together. And Emma, what are some methods that you've employed to help you cope with working in the medical field in this point of time? Yes, yeah, so obviously working in a hospital um, can be very stressful, everyone's very on edge. So definitely coming home to family and friends um, has been such a um, key thing for me to just cope and you know, to cry with them if I'm stressed or just to talk about my day and um, let it all out. But most definitely my fellow nursing students have been my pillar of strength through this pandemic. You know, they're the only people that uh, you know, I know we're going through the same thing. We all have common ground. So just to be able to, to talk about our experiences, about our clinical placements and just to have that supportive framework there has been, yeah, how I've gotten through this and how I've coped, I guess. And Tom, in your role as a teacher, we know that school has changed several times this year for students. How has that affected your job? Um, so, yeah, it's impacted it quite significantly. Obviously, at the beginning, when we had the whole change from face to face to online learning, we had to, you know, pretty much just change overnight and, you know, go to online learning packs, you know, using Google Classroom, um, you know, really collaborating with the staff to create these home learners, you know, um, activities that could be sent home and keep the kids busy and keep them learning, you know, so that they didn't fall behind. Um, and then, of course, when we snapped back, you know, last term, midway through the term, it was, you know, back to usual, you know, back to normal school, but with differences as well, you know, no school sport, no assemblies, hand sanitising, we couldn't even use balls or do tipping games. So it's really, you know, it's sort of, it hasn't snapped back to normal, it's just gone one change to another, which has been interesting, but I think it's shown how well the teacher's been able to cope and adapt, which has been really impressive. And Chris, how do you manage this extra stress and workload in the middle of a pandemic? So one thing Woolworths have done is um, really emphasise on everyone having a break, um, just taking a step back from everything. It was pretty hectic four to six weeks when the pandemic initially started, um, but grateful for working for Woolworths for, um, yeah, really, really pushing mental health. If anything is wrong, put your hand up and say, hey, I'm struggling, can help with this, included with having your group managers, state managers, general managers visit you and check in that you're okay. Um, yeah, and just a little bit difficult in the beginning as a sports lover, uh, all sports cancelled, but I think just sitting at home and relaxing, you don't really get that when you're working Monday to Friday, um, and then Saturday, Sunday, you're out with friends, you don't really get time to sit at home and just relax. So yeah, really great to think about that just, yeah, time to yourself. And Tom, how do you cope with your workload at this time? Um, I think the main way would be through support from the staff. It's actually been really good. Before COVID happened, I didn't really collaborate a whole lot with the staff. You'd see, you know, you'd have obviously your, start, your stage meetings, um, you know, where you'd just be with your stage group and everything. But since then, we actually had, you know, days on in, like a few days, since we were working the whole day with the stage. And that sort of collaboration and support we all gave each other was really awesome. And I actually sort of really enjoyed that part of it. Um, and I think the community responses actually helped a lot as well. I had a lot of parents coming and saying they respect the teaching profession a whole lot more now since it all happened. Um, you know, of course, they've been taking care of their kids at home and seeing what it's like. So, you know, they're imagining now what it's like with 30 kids in a class. So that's, I think that response has been really awesome. And the whole community response in general, even, you know, outside of parents has been really good. So that support we've been getting and obviously support from family, taking time out to just relax and reset the mind, going for a run here and there. I think all of that has really helped. Emma, have you seen a good response towards your role as a frontline worker from the community? Most definitely. Um, and that's actually been probably the reason that's got me through this and um, 
proves to me this is the reason I do what I do. Um, one of my roles at the hospital involves calling patients um, and I tell them their admission times um, for the following day. And on this phone call I had to this lady, uh, she, before she hung up, she just expressed her deepest <laughs> thank yous and gratitude to all healthcare workers and myself. And it was just that little comment that absolutely made my day. And it, yeah, just solidified this is the reason I'm doing what I do. And it definitely um, showed me that people really rely on us and really appreciate us. And so that was, yeah, just one example of, of how the community has been so supportive and um, yeah, just really helpful. And Chris, what has the response from the community been like for you? Have you seen everyone embrace the changes made in store? I think initially it was a shock to everyone. Um, as I said previously, this is the new normal, especially when you're going through Woolworths to do your shop. But the community now has really embraced social distancing, um, wearing a mask, hand sanitising. And I think it's great to see that a change this big um, has gone so well with everyone involved. And Tom, how has the community responded to your role in this pandemic? Yeah, it's been really positive actually. So everyone's sort of really banded together, the teaching staff and the wider community especially. We've had a lot more, uh, I think the parents have been really supportive, uh, which was maybe a bit unexpected because it's been hard for the parents as well, especially having the kids at home. But the majority of parents have been really, really supportive and they've said how much they appreciate teachers work more now and how, you know, they just think, I think, the wider community especially as well has seen the importance of teachers work which maybe wasn't something that was always seen before and of course with nurses and you know other you know and emergency workers as well has been really awesome and I just I guess thank the community for their support during this time and hopefully it continues. Chris do you think that this pandemic will result in permanent changes to your work? I think not just my work just your everyday life will change um, permanently, I think, not in a negative way, social distancing, good hygiene, um, it's not something that's really a bad thing, um, but I think it's just really great that everyone's gotten together and it's already been practiced pretty good in New South Wales, so just continuing on that and just very, I guess, insightful to see how the next six months will change the way we work, but definitely will change the way, uh, not in a bad way though. Emma, what about your role? Do you think some of the new measures in place will remain? In some aspects, yes. I think hand hygiene, infection control, um, the strictness involved with donning and doffing PPE, I think that will remain. And I really think the moral responsibility uh, for nurses and all other healthcare workers to stay home if you're feeling sick, I think that will remain. I think this pandemic has taught us to not underestimate what a simple cold is. So just stay at home if you feel sick. Tom, do you predict permanent changes will be made to your work and workplace as a result of COVID-19? Um, so I think some of the things like online learning and use of Zoom and things, these will not be used day to day, but they will be become more a part of everyday school life. Um, and I think just the main thing is maybe the health, as these guys have said, you know, there will be more and emphasis on children's hygiene, which I think, you know, we're good to emphasise because maybe they don't emphasise as much. Um, and I think, you know, that'll be good because especially we have teachers who are older, you know, and if they got sick, it would be really, you know, detrimental to them. So I think there's going to be more of an emphasis on, you know, making sure that you're keeping yourself hygienic and safe, but not just for yourself, but for others as well. And I think yeah, at the primary level, maybe not quite as much change. I think hopefully we'll get to back to more of a sense of normality in the coming years. Um, but definitely at high school, I think we could see, you know, bigger changes than, you know, or faster changes than what we would have seen without the pandemic. And what would each of you like people to know about your work? Emma, let's start with you. I think that despite the challenges or healthcare workers are facing, uh, this pandemic has actually been a very real world experience and opportunity for all of us. As a nurse, this is what I signed up for. And so it's actually been really a fulfilling um, experience so far, um, even all the challenges and all the restrictions that have been put in place. Um, yeah, it's actually been a really, I understand this is a very rare experience for someone like me. What about you, Tom? Um, yeah, I guess just, 
how adaptable teachers can be. You know, I think parents and you know people in the community did know before, but I think this has really shown how teachers have been able to adapt just from one day just to the next, just like that. Um, and hopefully, I think the community will have more of an understanding or respect for what teachers do. And I think we have seen that so far, which is really good to see. And I hope that continues. And Chris? I think just the way the, the way you operate every day can change. Um, something you don't really think about, going to the shops to buy your groceries. Um, but just how quick everyone can change to and adapt to what needs to be done. Um, and the amazing response from the community. I mean, you get, you do get array customers, but you don't really remember that. You remember the nice customers that will come up and say thank you for what you do. Um, as a retail worker, you don't think you're a frontline worker, but when you do have customers saying thank you um, for any help that you can do is really great. And guys, to finish off today's interview, I'd love to ask you a question that we ask everyone who participates in the New South Wales Through Their Eyes interview. What would you like to say to the young people of New South Wales? Chris, let's start with you. So I think um, during this pandemic as a retail worker, um, what I'd like to say to young people is don't lose hope. I know coming out of high school, a lot of the go-to jobs are retail jobs. Um, there are still, well, we're still looking for people regardless of age, regardless of experience. So don't lose hope and keep going. And Tom? What do you want people to hear? Um, yeah, just to know that things will get better and, you know, we will progress through all this. Things will turn to, you know, back to a sense of normality eventually. This isn't going to last forever. So just know that we will all get through this together. And just mainly, you know, to be kind to one another. I think that's really important, especially we're seeing so many different opinions from different people in the media. But just really be kind to one another, be understanding and lift each other up rather than put each other down. I think that's really important right now. Emma, what would you like to say to the young people of New South Wales? I would like to say that you are more capable than you think and always say yes to any opportunity that comes your way because with that comes new experiences and you learn so much about yourself and to push yourself out of your comfort zone and to do things that you were scared of doing initially. Um, but overcoming that I think is one of the best feelings in the world. And your ability to overcome obstacles, it brings out so much self-confidence and you really learn a lot about yourself. Like I have during this pandemic, I've gone into hospitals so scared, but um, I've come out um, with so much more knowledge and self-confidence in myself. So say yes to more things, believe in yourself and just trust that you can do it. Thank you guys so much for your time today. There's many more questions I'd love to ask, but that's all we have the time for. Thank you so much for being a part of the interview. Thank, Thank you. you. Our panellists today are just three examples of how young people all across New South Wales are responding to and supporting our communities through COVID-19. We're so grateful to everyone who is taking the necessary steps every day to make sure that we can keep our families and communities safe and protected. If you need more information about COVID-19, it's really important to ensure you get your information from reliable sources. So please visit the New South Wales Government website at www.nsw.gov.au. If you feel unwell, it is important to speak to someone and contact Health Direct or a registered GP for advice. It is normal to feel anxious or upset by COVID-19. And if you feel you've been affected by the contents of this video in any way and would like some help from someone who can help you through these uncertain times, please contact one of the organisations appearing on screen now who can offer you free counselling and advice. Thank you so much again to our panellists for giving us their time today and thank you for watching this episode of New South Wales Through Their Eyes.